Hello, Web Ghana. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, one of my favorite places in the world. This is the Oshun Grove in Nigeria, southwest Nigeria. It's uh, in Oshun State. It's like Thor. This is our goddess of fertility. Uh, you know, like Thor, the guy with the hammer, the god. So this is where they worship her, the god of, the, um, of fertility. If you want to have a baby, you go there and uh, you talk to her and you get twins. You know, Nigeria has the most twins in the world, by the way. Yeah. So that's, that's, it's called the Ashub Grove. And the whole street or the whole road has all these sorts of wonderful carvings, man-made carvings. It's really remarkable. And there are no lights at night, so it's very scary if you walk, if you walk by. Okay, this is not me. All right, this is me. This is me. So Africa's growth, technology as a driver in Africa. And this is true. This is a bushman somewhere in Namibia uh, who's going to looking for, uh, looking for game to hunt, but he's using a GPS device to figure out where he's going to find what he needs. So believe me, technology has penetrated uh, everywhere you can think in Africa. I'm going to start a little bit by showing you a little bit about what Africa is because I've got some interesting questions. People asking me, what, what, what is Africa? Africa has 53 countries and uh, Africa is very different. This is Lagos where I live. There are either 17 million people or 15 million people, depending on whose statistics you, you follow, living in Lagos. And this is just part of Lagos. So you can see it's just any metropolitan uh, city in the world just that our infrastructure is chaotic. Uh, we're just building light rail now, so the traffic jams are horrendous in, uh, in Lagos. But Lagos is Conga.com's largest market. This is Port Harcourt. This is another city. This is where the oil is in Nigeria. Nigeria is very oil rich. Uh, I think there are close to 10 million people who live in Port Harcourt. This is one of our another large markets. I think it's our second or third largest market uh, for Conga.com. Then this is a village. I'm sure a lot of people are familiar with this when they think of Africa, and this still exists. We have a 50-50 split between you know, what I showed here and uh, what I showed here. Conga.com, when we're selling, we're selling primarily to the cities, but we expect that sometime in the future, things will, the growth is happening on a daily basis, and more and more the rural areas are becoming more and more urbanized and they're able to afford more, not as much as the, um, the urban dwellers, but they're getting there. So a little bit about the technology landscape in Africa. You have, um, in 2000, Nigeria, for example, had about 100,000 phone lines. This was landlines. Mobile phones, I think there were just about, there were less than 20,000 mobile phone subscribers in Nigeria in about 2000. But by 2012, there were already 120 million phone, mobile phone lines. So virtually everybody, virtually every corner of Nigeria, and this is across Africa, has access to a mobile device. Now, it may be a cheap mobile device. It doesn't have to be your iPhone. It could be a cheap, no-name, Chinese-made brand, feature phone but it's still a mobile device that you can connect with. And that's what we should all keep it bear in mind. It may not be the slickest $300, uh, 250 euro device. It may be a 10 euro device. And Nokia got very good at this at one point. They were able to sell very low cost, uh, efficient devices around the world. We project across Africa, across Africa by 2015, one billion mobile phone subscriptions. That's a mega market. If we can reach 10% of that, that's big. Um, I'll tell you some stuff that's happening in, in terms of innovation. IBM, they've just opened a research lab in Nairobi. They're 12th in the world. They've opened two innovation centers, one in Lagos, Nigeria, and the other in Casablanca, Morocco. The f emphasis on big data and cloud computing um, because they see a, lot of, a big need for that across Africa. So I, I share this all to just set the landscape. It's not your father's Africa, you know? I, I'd like us to, 
sorry, I was trying to move this. I moved too far. Okay, you know, this, I know, this is in a lot of people's minds. And I want us to move away from this and start thinking about the access to technology, the availability, the penetration, the growth in technology. So I, I'll talk a little bit about what's happening in, in financial services. Some of you may have, talked, may have listened to the CEDA talk yesterday, and I'm going to reinforce some of what they said. In PESA, uh, one of the most successful businesses anywhere in the world by any, um, using any metrics to determine success, uh, it's a mobile banking platform. It started in Kenya in 2007, launched by Safaricom the, um, and Vodafone, the mobile phone carriers. People pay money into their uh, mobile phone wallet, and they're able to send it and use it to purchase goods and services. Uh, as at 2013, they had 50 million, 15 million uh, customers, 70% of the entire um, adult population in Kenya. They had revenues of about $128 million. And what's interesting is that that revenue, this, the, the mobile banking revenue alone, is larger than text and data. So what, what Safaricom figured out is what the market wants. And we must almost always think of that in doing business in any market. It's not what we want where we are, but it's what does the market want. So it's not necessarily that the market in Kenya wanted text and data. What they needed was a way to move money around. And these guys figured it out and they've been successful and they're running uh, to the, they're running to the end point. I tell you something else very interesting going on in financial services. Using mobile as well, they're able to get life insurance, accident insurance, casualty insurance to people who are not, who are unbanked. So long as you have a mobile phone number and you can top up a certain amount every week, you are going to be insured. Simple. There is no complexity. If you top up beyond a certain amount, you are insured at a higher value. And if you can keep your subscriptions at that amount, then your insurance is there. You know, some, some of these things are so simple, but it's, it's revolutionary. Because these people have not had access to insurance for so long, but somebody thought, you know, I want to sell insurance to these people but I can't go all over to every single person and do it the same way of, I will send you an email, you fill out a form, you send it back to me, because they don't have that access. But it's very simple. You always have your mobile phone with you. You always need to top it up in order to get, um, in order to be able to use it. If you top it up beyond a certain amount, you get life insurance. And this is in Zambia. It's uh, really a nominal figure, $1.70 uh, USD, that's USD. Uh, United States dollars, $1.70 a month, and uh, you, get, you get your access to life insurance. But you always ha we always have to think in terms of the population sizes. Nigeria is 160 million people. Uh, Africa is approaching 1 billion people as a whole um, by in the next 10, 15 years. So the numbers are there. Uh, I share some simple things. We're going to talk a little bit about e-commerce and conga.com, but ATMs, we had a big problem, a big problem deploying ATMs in Nigeria because we couldn't print receipts. The thermal paper was so difficult to come by. We just never seemed to have enough because we weren't manufacturing that type of paper in Nigeria. And so people did not trust the ATMs. They would be there but say, well, I put my card in, it gave me money, but I didn't, I didn't get the receipts. So I had no idea whether it actually took what it said it took and how much my balance is. Um, but w technology came to the answer. And now we send everybody instant alerts anytime something happens on your account. So immediately, now none of the ATMs even bother to print a receipt. We've just skipped that. We've just avoided it. And now what happens in Nigeria is you go to the ATM, you put in your card, you withdraw your money. Within five seconds, there's an alert on your phone that there was, a, there, was a, there was a debit to your account of so much, of so much Naira. And so now ATMs are, 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 have caught on and everyone uses it and everyone trusts it, just saying the, the power of technology. Something really interesting that I just heard now, uh, a, a mobile 
banking service in Nigeria, Pagatech, has um, come up with a solution to send pin codes to people that you can use on the ATM without a card. So you can go to the ATM now without having a physical debit card, enter in this set of codes, and it will spit out the money for you. And so we just, technology finding ways to solve problems. For those people who don't have a debit card, they can still access the ATM machine and get cash when they need to. E-commerce. Um, Nigeria's GDP now about $1,700 per capita. Still not great, but when you think that 10, 12 years ago we were about $400, it's not bad. And if, we, if that trajectory continues, it may be about four or $5,000 per person in the next 10, 15 years. So we're excited about that, about the opportunity that's happening across Africa, particularly in Nigeria and a lot of other countries. We're talking about 56 million internet users. And I got that figure from Wikipedia. So I didn't make that up. You know, that's not something I came up with. You go to Wikipedia, you search it, and you know anything on the internet is true. So if you search the internet, it's true. But 56 million internet users out of a population of about 150 million. Most of that they're accessing on the, on the mobile device. Most of the internet access is per usage. So a lot of people can't afford to pay monthly subscriptions, but you can afford to buy uh, one gig or one meg or 10 meg or 20 meg, and when it expires, the next time you have a little bit more money, you buy some more. But the numbers are there. And we know from being an e-commerce company, people are using the internet um, widely across Africa. Um, we got a $25 million investment in Conga.com at the end of last year, beginning of this year, from uh, investors, VCs. We are only today, all the e-commerce companies in Nigeria are only hitting about 0.5% of the entire retail um, opportunity. Most people are still shopping at markets. They're still shopping at local markets. Some people are going to supermarkets. And we believe that as we continue to grow, we're just going to be able to get more and more and more of that market. When people see the convenience, the um, breadth of products that we're able to offer, more and the trust. E-commerce only started two years ago in Nigeria, so there's still a lot of education about what this e-commerce is. But we continue to increase our customer base on a daily basis. Um, we're mobile, like I said, close to 50%. This is an old uh, version of our, uh, of our website, but close to 50% of customers access conga.com from mobile devices, including tablets, and we expect that number to continue to grow. So our strategy is increasingly mobile. How do we reach people on their mobile devices? How do we make it easy for them to shop? How do we reduce the catalog? For, that we are presenting on mobile so that you're not getting 172 results when you search for something and there's no way to page through or scroll through 172 results. We're thinking a lot of things about that and uh, we're, we're expecting that we'll come up with some really um, revolutionary solutions uh, before the end of the year. That's a little bit about our warehouse. People have asked what does Conga look like. That's one of our biggest warehouses, 1, 120,000 square feet. This was when they were putting it together. It's quite big. Uh, it's, it's on both sides of that divider, actually. But it's about 120,000 square feet. There's a Swedish connection. How come I'm here speaking? Uh, one of our investors is uh, the, the VC Shinovic. We, using the InRiver PIM, uh, product management uh, platform, and uh, one of our implementation partners, or our implementation partner for that is uh, Star Republic. So um, that's how we came to be here. Talk a little bit about what we call, or what I'm calling the conga effect. Because we are pushing the limits of technology, we're also pulling people along. We have third-party logistics partners who deliver goods for us to people all across the country. And uh, one of the partners that we're working with 
really was struggling with technology, really had no technology. Everything they did was by paper. So it was taking us such a long time to get information back as to have these goods been delivered? Are they in transit? It's coming back to us days or weeks after the fact, and it was really killing our financial reconciliations. We encouraged them. Encourage is a good word. It's almost like we forced them. So if you don't step up your game, we're going to, <laughs> we're going to shift our business elsewhere. But I'll use the term encouraged. But they accepted the challenge. They went in. We built some solutions for them at our own expense, obviously, but it benefits us. But they went and invested in the laptops and the internet service. They brought their people. We trained them. And now they're beginning, they've joined the internet age. And this is the sort of effect that companies like Conga have on the rest of the companies that work with us, suppliers. They have to adapt to our way of doing business. And most of them are willing to do so because they understand the kind of business that we can bring their way. When you think about Africa and selling to Africans, again, I say you, you, we have to target the product and the service to the African consumer. So this is an example of water. Everybody needs to drink water everywhere in the world. It's bottled water. I don't know if you're familiar with the Costco brand, a uh, big box retailer. It's very common in the United States to some extent in uh, Europe, but everything is, is purchased in bulk there. And this is an example of, if, if you go to Costco, you've got to buy two cases of 36 bottles of water, so you've got to live with 72 bottles of water. But in uh, Lagos, Nigeria, or in any city, um, in Africa, you buy one sachet of water. Maybe that sachet costs you less than 10 cents or less than 5 cents US. But that's, that's it. People just need what they need. We don't buy in bulk. And if we can figure out how to sell in micro units, but sell lots of that, then you're still able to make as much money as selling in mega quantities to fewer people. Um, some revolutionary, some additional revolutions that are happening in the technology space in Africa um, that I, are very dear to me and they're really helping to advance the um, cause of technology is education. Now, what this is a partnership between Nokia and the South African government. They designed this, developed this solution called MoMath, Mobile Mathematics, and it's an interactive Working with any type of device, feature phone device, smartphone device, it's an interactive mathematical um, application where you can take practice tests, you can send questions, get answers back, you can figure out how to, to make things work. So that's what these kids are doing. Uh, 10th graders, 11th graders, 12th graders, they use these applications to help them with their mathematics solutions because there are not enough tutors to tutor all of them. And um, it's not just a calculator, it's actually the entire mathematical curriculum for 10th, 11th, and 12th grade built onto a mobile device and just by going back and forth with the, um, with the server, you're getting responses and you're getting tutorials on how to solve problems. Now, they also partnered with MTN, the carrier, so that the data transactions are zero rated for this more math. So even if you don't have data on your phone, you can still send um, over a dedicated APN to this, um, to this mobile math server. Um, 66 percent of registered learners took at least one practice test. So it's quite, it is really, really, really something that people are using. It's not something that, it wasn't just a nice gimmick that was built and people did not use it. The, the, the children are actually using it. Now, this is Nigeria. That's a typical government secondary school. You can see that the walls have not been painted in quite some time, but they're still standing. But this is in one of those states. Again, the Oshun state, you remember the Oshun grove that I, sh I showed, the, the goddess of fertility. Well, th that state is trying to be very, very progressive when it comes to technology. And what they did was they created, uh, they got these tablets, and they've populated it with all the textbooks and all the curriculum, and they're committed to giving a, text, a, 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 a tablet free to each of these um, every 
government, every student in every government school in their state. But that is the advances and investments that we're trying to make in technology that are being made in technology across Africa. I'm just giving you a few examples. And just helping people to realize the opportunities when we're talking about global opportunities for really transforming and for doing business. And for doing business, we should always think about it that way. The government purchased these tablets from wherever they purchased them from. They didn't go handy begging. No one gave them, they purchased this. And they're finding ways to make it add value to their people and their communities. So it's called Okpoimo, uh, Tablet of Knowledge. Uh, and like I said, every student and every teacher in the state is going to get one. I think they started rolling it out last year. Now, another area where technology is really, 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 really making a difference is in health. This is just one of the greatest applications of technology that I could, I could think of. This, they use this smartphone to test your vision. And so, so it's amazing because the poor people can't get to the ophthalmologist and do a complete screening on the eye. You just hire a local nurse or a local individual who has some limited training with a smartphone, places the smartphone on the eye of the, of the patient and can immediately track, at least do some preliminary diagnosis. Um, I, I don't know how it was developed. I'm not sure who's behind it, but those are the sorts of applications that we should be thinking of when we're thinking of addressing people in low resource communities. Um, Bell was here earlier. I didn't realize that this morning was going to be a children's book uh, summit. We've moved from Web Dagana to children's book summit. But I, I wanted to share this. I am also an author of a published children's book, uh, Sikulu and Harambe by the Zambezi River. And that was uh, something I did a few years ago because I felt there weren't enough stories about Africa being told, and uh, pleasant stories about Africa being told. And I wanted to share some of the stories that I, I was told as a child. I wrote one book with the intention of writing many more, but I haven't got, I haven't got round. This was uh, published in 2008, and I, I thought that I would have two or three more additional books out by now, but wow, time has gone by. But uh, you can check out the website, sikulu.com, www.sikulu.com and uh, you can read the story there and watch the story there. Uh, so this is me, Kunle Ogune, Head of Products and Program Management at Conga.com. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And your book is actually in English. Yes, a apart that is from correct. Apart from Bells, right? That is correct. That is correct. It's you mentioned, was it 57 countries in the African continent, right? Is it 57 now? I think it's 53 or 54. 53, yeah. Uh, and we keep, well. uh, they keep, we keep dividing a few. <laughs> so somewhere around there is 50-something. What country do you think you should go to in order to find the new exciting things? Where would you start first? Hmm. If you go from Sweden, I would like to go to uh, pick well, one specific place. You can start with Kenya. There's a lot going on in Nairobi in terms of technology. Yes, I think, I think I'd say you start in, in Nairobi, and it will give you a good feel for, for Africa. So yes, Kenya is a, is a good starting point. Perfect. Any questions, Miriam, from Twitter? Yes. So we have um, a question. How's the security when it comes to mobile and ATM payments? Many scams? Is it many scams on the ATMs? From tram sessions? Uh, no. No, really, what you have to be worried about is the guy standing beside you who's trying, to <laughs> who's trying to get that money from you after you get it. So, no, there's not much scams in, in, in that. We, we have something, we have a double layer. When using your, your card online, there's a double layer verification. So, you enter your, for all card transactions, you enter the card number, you enter a PIN, and then there's a one-time password sent to you by the bank immediately. So you must have access to the email that's registered to the card. So in addition to the card number, the PIN, you've also got to enter this additional one-time password. So the only way someone can get it is if they hacked into your email, which does happen, but it's not that prevalent. Okay, perfect. And the second question? Yes. Amelie Vesterberg is asking, who built your e-commerce solution? I who built add. the solution? Oh, we, we have a team of developers in uh, Nigeria. Our team, I think we're at about, within Conga, I think we're close to 30. 
okay. developers right now, but we work with um, a company here, uh, they have a presence here in, in uh, Sweden called Vimo, mm -hmm. that uh, develops software for us as well, develop the platform. So we have um, developers around the world that we work with, but even in-house in Nigeria, we have a team of about 30 developers. Perfect. Great. You will be around for uh, to have a chat with people during lunchtime? Or? I am. I am. Great. I am. Such a pleasure to have you thank here you. in Sweden, thank and, you, and I hope you. to see you again thank soon. Thank you Thanks. very much. Thanks, guys. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.